What are you doing, Henry? Don't distract me. I'm spraying it all blue. Uh, no, you're not, Henry. Of course I am. Hey, what's going on? You mix the blue with yellow, and that makes green. It does? Excuse me, but that's amazing. Ah! Henry, where are you? I can't see you. I can't see me either. What's happened? Ah, because you're green, you're actually camouflaged against the green background. Really? Wow. Oh, I can't see where I'm going. Do something. Okay, Henry. Thanks. That was weird. Where did they come from? They were camouflaged just like you. Cool. Fellow green guys. What do you say we go get a soda and talk about some green issues and stuff? You know, did I tell you that green was my favorite color? Green seems to be nature's favorite color. Almost all plants and trees are green. Many of the animals that shelter in them are green too. Especially the ones that don't want to get eaten, like lizards. That's right. All kinds of animals are green so they don't get noticed by predators. But amazingly, there are very few green mammals. What is that? That, Henry, is a sloth, a very strange green mammal. Boy, is he having a bad hair day. Actually, that's what it looks like every day. The fact that his hair is so messy is one of the reasons that algae can grow on it. Excuse me, did you say algae grows on it? That's right, Henry. The sloth moves so slowly and lives in such a humid, sweaty place that his long, messy fur is the perfect place for algae to grow. Amazing! Does it grow inside his body like with the coral? No, just on the outside. It's what makes his fur that green color. So, personal grooming and hygiene don't play a big part in this guy's life. Well, at least he does take a bath sometimes. What am I supposed to be looking at here? Can't you see the fish and the seaweed? Ah, okay. So this fish is green because it lives in water? It's because it hides in the seaweed. The kelp is the same sort of green as the fish. That's why it's called a kelp fish. Someone sure had some sleepless nights thinking up that one. I think it really suits him. There may be lots of other fish that live in the kelp, but most of them are bigger and feistier. They don't need to hide in the weed, but the kelp fish relies on it. They've probably all got real sensible names, too. Orange fish, right? Garibaldi's, Henry. Maybe kelp fish isn't such a dumb name after all. for a Henry's yes. Amazing Golden Gecko Awards. The prize winners for the all-time best animal colors are... <laughs> In third place is the Frigate Bird, the amazing seabird that blows up like a football every time he sees a girl go by. In second place is the Chameleon. This is the real quick change master. They change their skin color more often than some people change their socks. But the winner of the Golden Gecko Award for the all-time best animal color is the Hummingbird! The smallest, fastest flapping, and definitely the brightest and most colorful bird in the world! Hummingbirds have been called the jewels of the forest. It's partly because of their tiny size. Some aren't much bigger than bumblebees, but it's mostly because their colors seem to glitter just like jewels. Me, I think they kind of look like new cars. New cars? Yeah, you know, with the metallic paint job. Of course, some hummingbirds aren't always as sparkly as others. Some aren't sparkly at all. Where's all the color gone? It isn't really gone. It's just that their colors are iridescent. Iridescent? Iridescent. 
It means that the colors we see are made by light passing through the tiny feathers. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? The colors change and shimmer as the hummingbird and its feathers move, and as the light hits the feathers at different angles. Ah, so it's kind of like light that sets the colors free. That's right, Henry, and that's why hummingbirds aren't very colorful if it's cloudy or at nighttime. You can't see their colors at night? Now there's a surprise. Give me a break, Henry. Okay. Hummingbirds and their amazing iridescent colors. The all-time best animal colors in a bright light. What's going on here? Well, I figured if I mixed all the amazing colors together, I'd make rainbow paint. I don't think it works that way, Henry. We'll see. Look, when you mix all the colors together, you don't get a rainbow. All you get is a mess. You do? Right. Maybe it just needs a bit more power. Be careful, Henry. Relax. What can happen? Uh-oh. What a mess. Whoa. That's no mess. That's art. I don't think so. Philistine, it's a masterpiece. A pulsating combination of contrasting black and white. And, uh, Blobs and squiggles. Oh, all right already. Look, I may not know much about art, but I sure know what I like. Well, I guess it does show that not everything has to be brightly colored to be, um, beautiful. Exactly. And I suppose there are a whole bunch of amazing animals that benefit from having a black and white coat. I guess the king of the world of black and white has to be the zebra. It's thought that those stripes actually serve a very vital purpose. Yeah, they save on decorating bills. If you have enough stripey friends around, who needs wallpaper? <laughs> no, Henry. No two zebras have the same pattern. So the stripes are kind of like human fingerprints? Precisely, which means that they could use their stripes to tell who's who. But that's not all. Hey, I know. The stripes are supposed to hide them from lions who can't see where one zebra starts and another one ends. Pretty good, Henry. That's certainly one way having black and white stripes could help them. But some people reckon that they have even more uses. Stripes could protect them from the blood-sucking tsetse fly. This little fly carries the dreaded sleeping sickness disease, but it's thought that they have problems seeing black and white. That could make the zebra practically invisible to the tiny pest. Yeah, and if they do come too close, then the zebra has one last line of defense, a handy fly swatter. Yikes, skunk. It's actually a zorilla, Henry, but that black and white coat isn't lying. It is a relative of the skunk, and it can cause a big stink, too. You can bet that when its neighbors see those colors, they'll react exactly the same as you. Look out, guys! It's gas mask time! Everybody out! Women and... Will the beast first? So, Henry, have all those animal colors given you any ideas for your decorating? They sure have, especially the amazing colors of hummingbirds. But those colors are made by light, not paint. Yeah, I know. Hit it, guys!